Hello everyone, this is Maureen and welcome back to another episode of Basic Stitches here on My Crochet Story. First I want to say thank you to every single one of you, whether you are a subscriber or not, for taking just a few moments to see what it is I have to offer on a stitch that you probably already know. Um, but notice I mentioned there whether you're a subscriber or not. If you're not a subscriber, please consider taking a moment and looking at the videos that I have already uploaded. And if you like what you see, please be sure to hit that subscribe button and look for the bell that has little hugs on the side so that you're notified of any content that I put up. Now, I know that this is not a new stitch, but I just wanted to kind of show you how I put it together and maybe give you some different ideas of how to use the stitch. So this is called the sand stitch. I use it a lot when I am creating hot pads. Now I like this stitch for a lot of reasons. For the hot pad is what I want to say. I like it because you can kind of see through it just a little bit. Can you see me back there? I call those little air pocket and it allows the heat to dissipate from the pot or the casserole dish or whatever it is that I set on top of it. It kind of helps things to cool off a little bit. It also gives that little air of pocket between whatever you may sit it on. In other words, if I put this on top of my counter, there's that airflow underneath there so that the heat has a little bit of chance to escape without the temperature of the pot, you know, hitting the tabletop or your countertop or another dish. Whatever it is you happen to be putting it down on, those little holes in there allow a lot of transfer of air, cooling, heat to, you know, balance things out. I also like it because it has a nice squish to it, a nice little, um, what do I want to call it? Well, I guess squish is just about as good a term as any. Uh, I do like the fact that it uh, also gives a little spring. You know, you can stretch it out a little bit if you wanted to. I'll tell you another thing that I like about this stitch. I uh, use this a lot on summer tops, especially if I want um, to have a little bit of weight to something like I will be releasing here in the next couple of weeks a swim to swimsuit cover up that I designed for one of my granddaughters and this made such a nice stitch to have for you know starting up on the top of the shoulder and then coming down so far and then allowing the bottom part to be nice and flowy but it gave it was used as a nice anchoring piece uh, so I kind of like that stitch for that. And besides that, it lends very well to uh, using a hook size larger or smaller. You know, a lot of stitches sometimes just do not transfer well if you want to use a different hook size. So this stitch to me is very versatile. Um, but like I said, it's my go-to stitch when I'm going to make my hot pads or even, um, what's the other word? not just only a hot pad, but I guess you could say a pot holder as well. So if you're interested in seeing what and how I put this together, take just a moment, gather you some cotton yarn. Now these are made out of cotton. Uh, I will be using some Red Heart Super Saver acrylic yarn to um, demonstrate for you because I want you to see the stitches and how they go together, where they go together, uh, you know, from row to row. And so I will be using that uh, little bit of acrylic to get it going for you. But, like I said, if you're ready, grab you some hook, grab you a hook and some yarn, and I'll see you back here in just a few moments. All right, so for this demonstration, I am going to be using Red Heart Super Savers. Uh, four weight worsted yarn. This is, I believe, iced blue. And I'm also going to be using a size size I Susan Bates 5.5 millimeter hook. You can use any hook that you wish. Now, 
for this uh, four weight here, I believe that this is the recommended size. I have gone up a hook size and I've gone down a hook size. So it's just going to be your own um, preference as to how tightly you want the stitches to be. Um, I'm using the eye. I like it. It uh, gives me the size and the density of the textile that I create. So that's why I chose the I hook. Now you can go up to a J if you wish, or you can go back down to an H, which will make the uh, textile a little more dense or thicker. But I find this to be a great uh, weight for me, and it gives it enough squish and enough distance between the top of the counter and where my pot's going to hit it. It gives it enough cushion to where I don't have to worry about it ruining my countertops. All right, so. First, I'm going to attach my yarn by using the slip stitch. You can attach your yarn however you want to. We just want to make sure that we got a loop onto our hook. And now this is made in a multiple of two plus one. Now sometimes you'll hear people say you just need an odd number of stitches. Well, that still comes down to two plus one, so it doesn't matter, but you're going to need at the very end an odd number. So I'm going to Count by twos, so there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. I guess I could tell you that I'm going to go to 24 and add my uh, one to give me 25. So that was eight, nine, 10, 11. And don't forget, you want to make sure that as you're making your chain that you take the time to go a little bit slower and make sure that those chains are pretty consistent all right because nothing sets your work off as being really nice and crisp on your edges and so with this being your beginning chain this is really going to set the tone for what your piece looks like so you don't want it all you know tight and loose tight and loose because that's going to cause your piece especially with this being a flat piece to kind of get a little wave going to it and we don't want that so make sure that you start out with nice consistent made stitches so i think i'm at 11 here let me count two four, six eight ten there's 11 12 13 14 15 16 17 18 19 20 1 2 3 4 and then one more making it 25 all right now I want to take just a moment and explain to you where I'm going to be crocheting in this chain now when we make a chain we make a chain and we it has three loops actually but we normally only talk about the top two you know the top loop the bottom loop well if you turn your chain over you're going to find that there's this third loop here now I like working in this third loop when I'm building my first row because it gives me a nice clean finished edge and you'll see that here in just a little bit whenever I get ready to get to the end. I'll show you why I do that but that's where I'm going to be working. Now if you don't want to work in that third loop behind your chain you can always come in and work in the top loop like most people do or I have done in the past. It's only been the last few years that I started using the technique of um, working in this back loop especially if I'm not going to do a border around my project or if I'm not going to add chains and I'm sorry for shaking folks there's nothing wrong with me other than it is a little chilly in here in the room and I have already bumped my AC up to about 74 but I guess because of the humidity outside right now the AC is working really really well so just wanted to throw that in there as an FYI. Alrighty, so in order to start the row, we are going to work into the third chain from the hook. Remember that your loop on your hook never counts as anything. It's just to help you build your stitches, and you got to have a starting point somewhere. All right, so skip the first two, and in this third chain, I'm going to work in the back loop. I'm going to make a slip stitch. Now remember, a slip stitch is just simply going into your loop, pulling up some yarn or a loop and then continuing on through and locking it down. That is a slip stitch. And then in the very next stitch, we're going to put a half double crochet. Half double crochet, we loop over our hook, then we go in to the loop, 
pull up a loop, three loops on the hook, yarn over and pull through all three. That makes it a half double crochet. And that is all there is to the sand stitch. You have a um, slip stitch and then you have a half double crochet, one right after the other. So in this very next loop here, I'm going to put a slip stitch. Pull it up and then continue right on through that loop. Yarn over and make your half double crochet in the next chain. Slip stitch again. And half double crochet. And that's all we're going to do all the way down the row. Slip stitch. Now folks, when you make these slip stitches here, don't pull down tight on this slip stitch. Because if you do, you're going to have trouble working into it when we come back around. Alright, so slip stitch and now half double crochet. Slip stitch. And half double crochet. And I will meet you at the end of the row. Now, before I leave you here just a minute, see how this is starting to curve? That's okay. It's going to do that because these are small stitches and they're following one right after another. So it is going to kind of want it to, to curve, but here in a couple of rows, it'll start straightening itself out and you'll be just fine. So I'll meet you down here at the end of the row in just a minute. All right, I'm coming down to the end of the row here. I just made a half double crochet, so I'm going to do a slip stitch. Half double crochet. And I'm going to end. Well, come on. There we go. Half double crochet. And I'm going to end with a slip stitch. All right, and there you have it. Now you're always going to start your rows with a chain two and you're going to end your rows with a slip stitch. Start with a chain two and end with a slip stitch. All right, so we're going to chain two, turn our work, and we're not going to work into the first stitch. We're going to skip this first stitch and in the next stitch, which is that half double crochet from the previous row, we're going to put a slip stitch. Now this chain two is always going to count as a half double crochet. And then we're going to skip a stitch and we're going to follow it then with a slip stitch. And then we just start our pattern over again. We're going to do the half double crochet in the next stitch. Then we're going to have a slip stitch which is always going to fall into the top of the half double crochet from the previous row. So I've just did a slip stitch. Now I'm ready for a half double crochet. Slip stitch. Half double crochet. And that is all there is to it. We just continue working all the way down with the slip stitch following falling in the half double crochet from the row before and our half double crochet going into that slip stitch from the row before and that is why I told you that you need to make sure that your slip stitches are not real tight because you're going to have to work back into them. All right, and I'll meet you down here at the end of the row in just a minute. All right, I'm coming to the end of my row here. I just did a, what did I just do? Oh, there it was. I thought that was a half double crochet. Or was that a slip stitch? Let me back it up one more time. Yeah, there we go. This was my half double crochet. This was the slip stitch. This was a half double crochet. 
This will be my slip stitch. Half double crochet. And then we're going to end with a slip stitch in. Now it doesn't look like there's anything there, but remember we uh, skipped the first two chains to make our first row there. Well, we're going to go into this top chain here and you may only be able to catch the one loop instead of two, but that's okay because we're just going to put a slip stitch there at the end. All right, so we're always going to start with a chain two and we're going to end with a slip stitch. So let's make another row. I'm going to chain two, turn my work. I'm going to skip this first stitch and there is my half double crochet. So that's where my first slip stitch is going to go. And then into that first slip stitch goes my half double crochet. Slip stitch, half double crochet, slip stitch, and half double crochet. Now the one thing I did not mention is every time I create a stitch, I'm going through both loops of that previous stitch. See that? That's the top of the stitch, so I'm going through both loops, not just one. So I'm slip stitching here. And in the top of this slip stitch, I'm going to do my half double crochet by going through both loops. Most of the time, if we just want you to, to work in the front loop or the back loop, we're going to tell you. And I just started to do that. <laughs> Talking about the back loop, I was going to go in that back loop. All right. So you take just a minute and finish yourself down the row, and I will meet you back here at the bottom in just a moment. All right, I'm coming to the end of my row. I'm getting ready to make a half double crochet, then my slip stitch, half double crochet, and a slip stitch into the top loop of that chain two from the previous row. Chain two, and turn my work. Now remember earlier when we first started this, we were, um, that first row there was starting to curl just a little bit on us. Well, you can see here now that it's straightened out, flattening out real nice for us. So let's make another row. I've chained two, turned my work, skipping the first stitch, slip stitch into the top of that half double crochet from the previous row. And I'm going to make my half double crochet into the slip stitch and just go again. Now the nice thing about this stitch is that you can, once you get yourself a rhythm going, you can, I'm not going to say zip right through this because I don't want you zipping through anything. Um, I know that there's tips and tricks out there for you to be a faster crocheter, but um, folks, we're not machines, and we shouldn't, in my opinion, all right, I'm going to stop right there, in Maureen's opinion, we should not create our works, our crochet works, by seeing how fast we can get finished with them. Um, to me, that de defeats the purpose of something being handmade. Um, I don't want to be a fast crocheter. Now, do I want to be productive? Yes. But if it means that the quality of my stitches is going to suffer because I want to just whip through there, then I am i don't want to be known for being a fast crocheter. I want to be proud of what I do. And so I like to take my time and make sure that everything I do is correct. That's that slip stitch there. And my, whoops, slip stitch into the previous row. All right, so there is the 
a little swatch. I wanted to show you how to get it started and what it is supposed to look like. Um, now, you can do this in acrylic if you would like, but I would not use it if you're going, not use the, the acrylic if you're going to use this to set hot items on because depending on the, the temperature of the item, it can melt the acrylic. So that's why we always do things like um, hot pads, hot holders out of cotton. So there she is. Now you can make these any size that you want. Mine is a little small. Let me see if I can get her there in the picture. Let me raise my camera just a little bit so you can see her better. There you go. Um, mine is a little smaller. Now I do make mine in different sizes because um, I don't want a great big old pot holder if I'm taking a bowl of soup out of my microwave, you know, and setting it on the counter. So I make some small ones, I make some big ones, and then I make some really large uh, rectangular ones, like if I want to put a casserole dish on it or not. But it gives a nice texture. Now, you could also use this as a washcloth if, cloth if you would like, but I tend to like it a little better than... Um, than any of the other stitches that I use with my cotton when I'm making certain household items because it is airy enough to where it will allow the steam to escape, you know, from things being hot, allows a little bit of air to come up underneath it to help it cool off if you need for it to cool off kind of quickly. And besides that, I just think it's a very pretty stitch. It's also to me a very, very useful stitch. So I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. I hope it was something that is useful or that you find that you that would be useful for you and your household. Um, it also makes up nice little, uh, you know, you make three of these, tie them up with a little bit of ribbon, give them as a housewarming gift or tuck them in a little basket with uh, some utensils or something, you know, to, again, give as a housewarming gift or for a... Um, kitchen shower for newlyweds, that kind of thing. So, there you go. Basic stitch for the week. Only use the two concepts of the slip stitch and the half double crochet, and we built us a new stitch called sand stitch. I appreciate all of you being here. As always, be the light out there in the darkness for someone today because you never know could be your light they need to see, and I hope you shine brightly. I love you all. Bye.